news from the march. Open your ears. For which of you will stop the vent of hearing when loud terror strikes? Not far from the coast of our fair land, an unsuspecting passenger vessel of happy innocence and revelers stopped with all a peaceful ocean crossing maid. When suddenly the villainous enemy appeared, the treacherous fiend without word or warning blasts the passenger ship. Alack the day, all things that were deemed festival turn to black funeral. All quit the vessel and plunged into the foaming fire, whom the blind waves and surges did devour. The sea receiveth all. A boat, a boat, my kingdom for a boat. A friendly vessel, led by the brave and valiant Count Orsino, made haste to the doomed sea. He plunged into the sea and rescued the sole survivor, a young maid named Viola. It happed her brother also was racked, and searchers were issued to find him. But nothing could fetch her brother from the all-binding sea, and there were no earthly means to save him. Alas, Viola lost not only her brother, but with him the portion and sinew of her fortune, her marriage dowry. Poor girl, is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of her grief? Orsino attempts to cheer her with flowers, as the noble priest asks for guidance from above. The valiant Orsino did not by the ladies go unnoticed. Our crowned heads, too, set great store on his actions well done. Not many are honored in such glorious ceremony. The first lady delighted displays this rare prize. How did you save her, Orsino? Soon! Perhaps, like a politic noble, he will seek office soon. The ladies would be most happy. But he is rumored to dote in vain on the fair Olivia, who still mourns her brother's death and has abjured the company of men. But bloody war turns our thoughts from love. That the enemy's a murderer, is it not true? An hypocrite and civilian violator, is it not true? And true? Nay, it is ten times true. But armed with heroes such as the valiant Orsino, the sun will soon set on our dusky enemy. Terror in this land shall lose its sway, meeting the check of such another day. Until this business so fair is done, let us not rest till our own be won. This has been News from the March. Let the boxer bend him. Anything 
attachment is but patch. Virtue that transgresses is but patch with sin. Sin that amends is but patch with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve so. Falls into 
full abatement and low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. Here comes. 
Come, surrender, Wogie face. <laughs> said Toby Bell, town now, said Toby Bell. Sweet surrender. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you fish rule. You too, sir. Akash, Sir Andrew, Akash. What's that? My cousin's chambermaid. Good mistress Akash, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary, Akash. You mistake, knight. <laughs> Akash is fronter, border, luha, a sailor. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of Akash? Be ye well, gentlemen. And thou let what so, Sir Andrew, wouldst thou might never draw a sword again? And you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw a sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, <laughs> but you shall have. And here's my hand. Why, sir, thought is free. I pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. <laughs> Wherefore, sweetheart? <laughs> What's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can't keep my hand dry. What's your jest? A dry jest, sir. <laughs> Are you full of them? I, sir. I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go your hand. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> oh knight, thou lackest the cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think. Unless you see canary put me down. We think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. <laughs> no question. And I thought that I'd more swear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, said Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? <laughs> do or not do? I would I had bestowed that time in the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Mm. Then hast thou had an excellent head of hair. Why would that have mended my hair? Past question, but thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent! It hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope to see a housewife take it between her legs and spin it off. <laughs> Diana 
as lit is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound and all assembled of a woman's part. <laughs> <laughs> I know thy constellation is a right act for this affair. <coughs> Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a bar full strive. Where I woo myself would be his wife. Madam, there's a young gentleman here much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, but tis a fair young man. Well, who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby! Madam, your kinsman. Let him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but a man and a fire. Go you, Malvolio. Uh, gentlemen. A gentleman. What gentleman? It's a gentleman here. Plague on these pickled herring. Have our son! Good, Sir Toby. Cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. There's one at the gate. Aye, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me strength, say I. Oh, well, that's all one. Help! He's in the third by a drink. Go look after him. Madam, your young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. It takes someone to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak to you. What is to be said to him, madam? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, and says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post to be the supporter to a bench, but he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why is mankind? What manner of man? A very ill manner who speak with you, will you or no? What personage in years is he? Not old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash before tis a peas card, or a cooling when tis almost an apple, tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let <laughs> him approach. Gentlemen! Give me my veil. Come, we'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Wonder it 
you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If your reason be brief, tis not the time of moon with me to make one who is skipping a dialogue. Do you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I am to hull here a little longer. Some nullification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous message to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overtures of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you begin rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. <laughs> what I am and what I would are as secret as maiden heads. To your ears, divinity, to any others, profanation. <laughs> Give us this place alone. <laughs> we will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? In the first of his heart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. <laughs> Look you, sir. Such a one as I was this present is not well done. Excellently done, if God did all. <laughs> <laughs> Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blend, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. If you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world, no copy. Oh, oh, sir.
What would you... Let it be. 
then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. <laughs> Do it, knight! I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Count was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. But Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a neighborhood and make him a common recreation, do not think I am witty enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Possess us? Possess us? Tell us something of him. Marry, sir. Sometimes he's a kind of a Puritan. Oh, and I thought that I'd beat him like a dog. What? For being a Puritan? By exquisite reason, dear knight. I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. <laughs> what wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein, by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady your cousin. <laughs> Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her 
my wealth more noble than the world craves not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that nature hath bestowed on her tell her I crave as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir, I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a greater pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman inside the better being of so strong a passion as love doth in my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention, alas. Woman's love can be called appetite, no motion of the liver, but the palate that suffers surf, employment, and revolt. But mine is as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman to your lordship. And what's her history? Of like, my lord. She never told her love, but like concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than our will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all of the daughters of my father's house. And all of the sons, too, and yet I know not. <laughs> Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel, tell her my love can bear no place, bide no dinner. Must I sit 
to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours, what might you think? Can you not set my honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tear in his heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hideth my heart. So, let me hear you speak. I pity you. Let's agree to love. No, not a prize, which is a proof that very oft we pity our enemies. Oh, why then methinks this time to smile again. O oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much better to fall before the lion than the wolf. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet when witch and youth has come to harvest, you are warmers alike to reap a proper man. There lies your way due west, then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing matter to my lord by me. Stay, I pray thee. Tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. Oh, if I think so, I think the same of you. Well, well then you are right. I am not what I am. Oh, I thought you are as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? No! Oh! Oh! I wish it might be, for now I am your fool. What a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous Guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would see me in. Love's night is noon, says I am. By the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so. Let Margaret, all my pride, burn with your reason, can my passion hide? Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I will not therefore test no cause. But rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. No! Oh, by innocence, I swear! And by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none, shall be mistress of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Get me all three into the box tree. Malvolio's coming this way. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behaviors to his own shadow this half hour. <laughs> Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this swarm will make a contemplative idiot of him. Go, go, go. Close the name of Jesse. Fly now. There, for here comes the trout. They must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near, that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? He is an overweening rogue. Peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced plumes light. I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Ha! Bro, bro, pistol him, pistol him. Please, please. There is example for it. <laughs> the lady struck in marrying the omen of the wardrobe. Fire on him, Jezebel. Peace, now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone cold, <coughs> him in the eye. Calling for my officers about me in my branched velvet gown. Coming from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Higher and brimstone! And then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsmen, Toby, bolts and shackles. Seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while, perchance wind up my watch, or play with my some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me, 
Shall this fellow live? Mars, yet peace! I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. But does not Toby take you a blow at a lynx then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me upon your cousin, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! These will break the fingers of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many to call me fool. <laughs> <laughs> What employment have we here? <coughs> By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her C's, her U's, her T's, and thus make she her great deeds. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, her T's. Why that? <laughs> <laughs> to the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes, her very phrases. She's my lady. To whom should this be? This wins him liver and all. <laughs> Show knows I love lips do not move. No man must know. I may command where I adore. Show knows I love do be do be do. <laughs> Silence like a Lucrece. There's no obstruction in this. And at the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me, softly, M-O-A-I. Oh, I make up that. He is now in a cold scent. So, a quiet pun for all this going to be as rank as a fox. M. <gasps> Malvolio, M, why that begins my name. <laughs> I'm not saying we're working out. The curve is excellent. It falls. M. But then there is no consonancy in the sequel. It suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end. I hope I or Pudgel will make him cry. O. <laughs> <laughs> and then I comes behind. I have had any eyes behind you. You might see more detractions at your heels than fortunes before you. M O A I. This suffers under this edge. Uh, uh -oh. This makes no sense at all. Uh -oh. oh, thus follows prose. <laughs> <laughs> services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will battle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point to vise the very man. I do not now fool myself to that imagination, Jamie, for every reason excites me to this, that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross-guarded, and in this manifests herself to my love. And with a kind of injunction drives me towards these habits of her liking. I thank my stars I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> I will 
be strange, stacked in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on. Joe and my stars be praised. Oh, here lies a postscript. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well, therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I pray thee. Joe, I thank thee. Smile. <laughs> I will do everything oh. thou wilt have of me. I will not give my part of this sport for a pension of thousands to be paid from the sofa. I can marry this wench for this device. So could I too. And ask for no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. No gull catcher. Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Or am I either? Shall I play my freedom a traitor and become thy bond slave? Or I either? Why thou hast put him. <laughs> thou hast put him in such a dream that when the vision of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true. Does it work upon him? Like Aqua Vita with a midwife. <laughs> you will then see the fruits of the sport mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings and to the collar she abhors, and cross guarded, a fashion she detests, and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, it cannot but turn him into a notable content. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too.
you no longer? Know you not that I go with you? By your patience, no! My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might well distemper yours. Therefore, I pray with you to leave, that I may bear my evils alone. If it were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you, let me yet know of you whither you are bound. Oh, soon, sir, my determined voyage is mere extravagancy. But I do perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners to express myself. You must know of me, Antonio. My name is Sebastian. My father left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. And if the heavens had been pleased, would we have so ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you pulled me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. <laughs> Lady, sir. Though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounts beautiful. I could not with such esteemable wonder over far believe that. Yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, in salt water. Though it seems I drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare thee well, once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occurrence more, mine eyes will tell tales of me. Stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, does spur before me. And not a love but jealousy, what might befall your travel. Being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often proves rough and unhospitable. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks. And thanks. And ever thanks. Now, what's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, best first see your lodging. I am not weary. I, I pray of you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of wonder that do renown this city. Now, would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against Orsino, his galleys, I did some service. Such note, indeed, that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. You like you slew a great number of his people. The offense was not of such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of the time and quarrel may well have given us bloody argument. <coughs> they have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our town did. Only myself stood out. For which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. I do not then walk too old. It doth not fit me. <laughs> Hold, sir. Here is my purse. In the south suburbs of the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet, whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge the viewing of this town. <coughs> there shall you have me. Why, I have a purse. I believe your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets. I will be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the hour! I do remember. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. Well, this was a great display of love in her toward you. Slight. Will you make an ass of me? Nay, sir, I will prove it upon the legitimate oaths of reason and judgment. And they have been grand jury men since before Noah was a sailor. She did show the youth favor in your sight only to exasperate you. To awake your dormouse valor and put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have then accosted her and with some excellent jests, fire new from the mint, you should have Bang the youth into dumbness. This was looked for in your hand, and this was bought 
the double guilt of this opportunity you have let time wash away. And now you are sailed into the north of my lady's opinion where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. Unless you do redeem yourself with some laudable attempt at either valor or policy. And it be any way, it must be with valor. For policy I hate. I would as leave be a brownist as a politician. Why then? <laughs> Build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me that counts you to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My tell shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's combination with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. <laughs> Will either of you bear me a challenge to you? Go! Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. Does no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Talk him with the license of ink. If thou dowest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lies as will lie on thy sheet of paper, set him down. Go, about it. Let there be gold enough in thy ink, though the writing of those pens does no matter. About it, go! This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been near to him, lad, some two thousand strong or so. You shall write a rare letter, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me, then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot nail them together. For Andrew, if he will open, and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and his opposite, the youth, shows in his visage no great presage of cruelty. <laughs> Nobody understand a nine tough. He's in yellow stockings. And cross collar? Most villainously. You have not seen such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, he will smile and take it for a great favor. Oh, God! <laughs> Fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. 
My it all adheres together, and no dread of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Job, not I is the doer of this, and he shall be thanked. In the name of sanctity, if all the devils of hell be drawn in little, and Legion himself possess them, yet I'll speak to him. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go no, off, I discard you. Let me in front of my private door! Lo, how hollow the fiend to speak within him! Did not I tell you? So tell me, my lady prays you to have a care of him. Aha, uh -huh, does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. Why, how do you do, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man, the boy the devil, consider he's an enemy to mankind? Do you know what? Ah! You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. 
Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your God. For your opposite hath in him with youth, strength, speed, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is Derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. This is as unsimple as it is strange. I beseech you do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligent death, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Send your festi. Stay you by this gentleman to my return. Mm -hmm. I pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? Well, I know the night is incensed with you, even to a mortal arbiterment, but nothing of the circumstance more. Let me see you what manner of man is he. Oh, nothing of that wonderful promise to judge him by his form, as you are like to see him in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most faithful, skillful, and bloody opposite you could have found in any part of the Lyrian! <laughs> <laughs> I will make you peace with him if I can. I shall be my fellow to you, Floyd. I am one that had rather go with you than with another. Let me see you what I care not to know so much of my metal. The youth is a devil. I've not seen such a revival. I had a pass with him. He gave me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it's inevitable. And then on the answer, he pays as certainly as your feet hit the ground. They step on They say he's been ventured to the Sophie. Hark's on it. I'll not meddle with him. Hey! The youth will not be pacified. I can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it! And I thought he were valiant or so cunning and bent. I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Great Capulet. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. You persuade them to use the devil? Sir! There's no remedy. The gentleman will fight with you for own sake. Mary, he hath better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds it now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw for supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I like of a man. Yeah! Yeah! Give ground if you see him furious. <laughs> Come, Sir Andrew! There's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honest sake, have one ground with you. He cannot fight the duello avoid it. But he's promised me, as he's a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Pray God he keep his oath. Come on!
This comes to seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do now? My necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat you of some of that money? What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here, in part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and lovability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, here's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt to my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know what you, my boy, saw any feature. I make ingratitude in a man more than lying, vainness, babbling, drunkenness, or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Heavens themselves, oh, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. Relieved him with such sanctity of love. And to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by. Away! Fire the night of bruise this god! Thou hast done good features shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty. But the beauteous evils are empty trunks or flourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come. Sebastian. Come. Sebastian. Sebastian. He named Sebastian. He named me Sebastian. Ha, 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 ha. 
world she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that it wraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Madness. Although my soul disputes well with my sense. Some error, but no madness, madness. Yet doth this accident and blood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, madness, madness. I am ready to distrust mine eyes, but I am with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. So bloody and so dear as made thine enemies. Well, Sino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. Witchcraft to me hither, that most ungrateful boy there by your side. From the rude seas and rage and foamy mouth did I redeem. Rack past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love without retention or restraint. For his sake did I expose myself into the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended, his false cunning not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wake, denied me mine own purse, which I recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. All day this youth hath tended upon me, Fellow, thy words are madness, but more of that anon. Take him inside. Here comes the Countess, heaven walks on earth. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam, what do you say, Cesario, good my lord? My lord would speak, my duty hushes speak. Music. Oh, still so cruel. Still so constant, Lord. To what? Perverse. 
perverseness, you uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest tenderness that e'er devotion offered. What shall I do? Even would it please my lord that shall become him. Come, away. Whither, my lord, has our husband say? Husband? I husband, can he that deny? Her husband, Sarah? No, my lord, not I. Perhaps it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness what occasion now reveals before tis ripe. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed <laughs> by the mutual joiner of hands, attested by the holy close of lips, <laughs> strengthened by the entertainment of rings, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony. O oh, thou assembling come! What will thou be when time hath sown a grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall become thine overthrow? Farewell. And take her, but henceforth direct thy feet where thou and I shall never meet. My lord, I do protest, I do not swear. Hold, oh, little thing, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, I swear. Send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb, too. For the love of God, your help, I had rather that forty pounds I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? What oh, like place here he is! <laughs> you broke my head for nothing! And not that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you! If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me! I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. <laughs> here comes Sir Toby now, halting. You shall hear more. If he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you on the gates than he did. Come now, gentlemen, how is it with you? That's all one. Has hurt me, Lizzie, and not it. Sot! Did see the surgeon, Sot? He's drunk, sir, since eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue, and a passing measures pain. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him! <laughs> Who has made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, but we'll be dressed together. Oh, will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb and a knave. A thin-faced knave, a gull. Get him to bed, and let us hurt me, Mokshu. I'm sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me. By that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons, a natural perspective that is and is not. Ugh, dear Antonio, how the hours have racked and tortured me since I have lost thee. Sebastian, or you? Fearest how that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> David 
made my sister 13 years. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, and yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. <laughs> Boy! Thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. From this time forth, you shall be your master's mistress. Oh. <laughs> such clear lights of favor made me come smiling and cross guard to you, to put on yellow stockings and frown upon Sir Toby and the younger people, and acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious geck and gull that Aaron Benchon played on? Tell me why! <laughs> Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of question, tis Mariah's hand. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, be content. This practice hath most rudely been passed upon me, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Meantime, sweet sister, you and I shall not part from hence. Cesario, come! <laughs> For so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancies coo. Oh. <laughs> 